Winfield United Technical Seed Agronomist Robert Kosser here with First Farmers Co-op Agronomist Ryan Zawacki doing the next 10 day episode on June the 30th focusing on cotton. Ryan, a lot of our cotton is at 12 to 13 leaf stage now. So talk to us a little bit about what we need to be thinking about over the next 10 days. What's going to happen that we really need to be focusing on? Well, the next 10 days is very crucial to watch watch the height management of our cotton on specific varieties. Robert, we really want to watch the internode length, uh, especially in you know 10 node above cotton, uh, 10, 11, 12 nodes. We really want to count down from that to the top node and count down three or four nodes and look at the separation between the nodes. That way we we don't want much leg. We want we want a lot to focus on right to get into reproductive growth and to set them set them squares up and get some uh, retention and in saying retention we also want to pay attention to our threshold on plant bugs yep. uh, as we're scouting and look at those internode links we want to be looking and seeing if we got good good retention of squares uh, that our numbers are staying low and then uh, also as we're looking we need to be aware of what's going on south we're in Tennessee we need to be aware of what's going on south in Louisiana with the with the moth counts and the, and the bow worm uh, so the next 10 days are going to be crucial really watching this plant and, and the height management and getting some getting some picks in the tank. The three three to four ounces of methoquat chloride are very, very crucial, very, very inexpensive, but right. make, yep. a lot, make a lot of yield uh, investment in our cotton crop. So the reason we go a light dose now is because that, that methoquat gets in the plant. And if as the plant gets bigger, it takes a higher dosage to get the same effect. Yeah. And so you mentioned coming down here in the leg, we're really looking at our height to node ratio, right? right? We want right. to keep that in check around that one, one and a half node yeah. for every uh, uh, height growth there. Right. Because the only way we will add yield is add nodes. That's right. And to That's add right. nodes, we've got to add height. So that makes it reduce airflow late season as we get diseases moving in, tar uh, target spot, right. things like that. So yeah. keeping our height controlled early will set us up to keep these nodes stacked in here a little tighter. Right. And really, I kind of use a two finger. Is that what kind of what two, you use? Two to, two to three fingers. Yeah. Really, really depending on variety because you don't want to wait wake up one day and it'll be like, man, it's caught me off guard and I've got to go out and throw a... You're never going to shorten the plant up. That's right. You're just trying to shrink the inner nodes that are going right. to expand from here yep. on. Yep. And so, like I said, four or five down, I count, but also I, I use the old, how floppy is that terminal, That's right. right? If it's got some stiffness in that terminal, it's, I know I've got some restriction there exactly. versus if it's really floppy, and I know I've got top dressed this cotton not long ago. That's right. I've got some moisture, so yep. it's really in that growing space. It's, phase. So it's, tip, it's really critical to get that mevaquat in that plant to start shortening those internodes. Exactly, exactly. You, it all equates to yield and, and setting that fruit. And we don't want a lot of a lot of different farmers have different mentalities about how tall right. they like the cotton over years, you know, years span. And, and some people revert to cotton; they like it right above their right at their chest. Some people like it at their belt. But you know, this this timing is real, real key in the next uh, ten days, especially after we've had our top dress application. Yeah, because you, you can do more good now with mevaquat now than you can in trying to catch up later. Exactly. And, and you like I said, you can't ever shorten plant up. Now, real quick on the boll worm flights in South Mississippi and Arkansas and, and Louisiana. I know they're spraying some there. On your two gene cotton, what are you using as threshold for spraying? Uh, typically, typically we look at uh, look at. Usually, we're looking at egg counts because okay. we don't we don't find we don't find a lot of larvae. So we're looking right. for eggs first. So uh, you know, in a hundred foot hundred foot a row, we're looking from anywhere from one. If we find some larvae, one to two larvae. And really, really ho honing in on on the egg hatch, seeing if we're seeing any yep. eggs. So uh, yeah, just because we got flights, don't, don't mean we're gonna don't, have pressure. Right. Just because of eggs, we don't necessarily have to get right. larvae. And so it's just something to watch. Plant bugs still critical. You touched on that. Make sure we're controlling the plant bugs. Any right. square they sting, any square retention we lose is lost, lost yield. yield. The higher the square retention we can get early. Remember, our most profitable, highest yielding, highest fiber bowl comes in that first fruiting branch you know, right in here, yes. that is our first, that's right. first really fruit that's going to add yep. yield. So we want to protect those and really drive square yeah, that retention. That one's retained right there, so you want to keep that one yep. from there on forward. Yep, there, then we got the next one out here that, you know, we've probably already lost there. Yeah. Then you got a square there and it keeps up the plant. Right. So square retention is critical. So as we think about the next 10 days, fix applications, you got to get your mepiquat applications on really critical. Watch for plant bugs and watch for worms. Uh, that's kind of what we're going to look for next 10 days, Ryan. Appreciate yeah. you joining me today. Thank you, Robert. Stand down.